how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we are gonna be attempting to breed some quarries. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be breeding two different types of quarries. We're gonna be hopefully breeding my black Venezuelans, which if you guys have been around the channel for a bit, you would know I've been struggling with these guys a bit. They are fairly easy to breed, apparently. I haven't had any success with them. I haven't taken them out of this tank that they're currently in, so they're in this tank. This is an 80 liter, aquarium i think there's quite a few males and females in there from what i can see they hide quite a lot and they've just been in here i've tried triggering them with like water changes and even using ro water and lots of live food and things like that and we haven't had much success now the other type of quarries we're going to be breeding are in the other tank over on the other side of the fish room which i'll show you in a second which are some juliais or trilineitis so these are false juliais so they're not like the legit ones but in today's video we're gonna be trying to do this a different way and a more efficient way because quarries for me have been one of my best sellers and if you guys don't know, I sell a lot of my fish wholesale. I also sell fish to you guys on my website down below if you guys wanna go check that out. But I do sell a lot of fish wholesale and the wholesalers absolutely love quarries and I'm trying to find different ways to produce quarries at a larger scale instead of just you know laboriously going through each tank and picking out all the eggs and things like that. So. I was doing some research, I was going through one of my favourite books, I'd call this book my bible, I've been selling a ton of these guys on my website down below, it's, I'll pop it up here, it's Ornamental Fish Farming, it's an incredibly good book, it's written by a guy who um, in South Africa, he opened up a fish farm I think in Kohaku, he came over to Australia to a place called Kilkoi and set up a huge fish farm and basically it's an encyclopedia just full of knowledge and information in there from this guy and it's literally like 25 bucks or something like that on my website, maybe it's 30 bucks and it's absolutely awesome. Like it, I can't stress how good that book is but I was looking through that book and I was looking at the section where they're breeding quarries and they were breeding quarries in bins. So I hadn't even thought about this, I've been breeding bedders and tubs and things like that and trying to you know, come up with methods that are really, really efficient and easy to do. And I never thought about breeding quarries in bins, so luckily we found that section. They were breeding albino quarries and bronze quarries, which are very easy to breed and I can imagine would be very, very easy to breed in tubs, but I thought, you know, I might as well try this method with some of the quarries that I have had success with. I've had a lot of success with the trilineitis. They just breed like crazy in the 80 litre tank and I haven't had any success with the black Venezuelans. So I thought, you know, try with something that's probably gonna breed and something that's not gonna breed. So what I've done is when we go over and have a look at my other tank, I've separated the males and females for the trilineitis into two separate tanks and we've plumped up the females and gotten them full of eggs. And I haven't had to do that with my black Venezuelans because, well, they haven't been breeding. So they're full of eggs and um, hopefully they're gonna breed for us. So the method's pretty simple. And the reason I wanna do it in a bin is because of the rearing of the fry. So what we'll do is basically the rundown of the method is we take apart our males and females of the quarries that we are trying to breed. We take them apart for about a week and fatten up the females and get the males really eager to breed. And then we've set up our little tub, our bin, and I'll show you guys how we're gonna do that. And we introduce the males and the females, they hopefully spawn, and then we just take the colony out and hatch the eggs inside of that bin. And hopefully because the bin is, I think it's like 60 litres, hopefully that space and that huge um, area on the floor will provide enough space and hopefully grow all of our quarry fry really, really quickly. So yeah, I guess without any further ado, let's go have a look at the quarries and I'll show you guys they've been laying some eggs and then obviously not fertile because there's no males and we'll go set them up. So yeah. So we'll start on over at this tank, which is my black Venezuelan tank. And in this tank we have a few of these orange flash histogramic hackatoides. So these guys I did breed and I've just got them in this tank as basically in case I wanted to start up another colony because for the moment I've stopped breeding these guys but maybe in the future I will decide to do that again. So we've got a male in here and a few females and it looks like those females have been laying eggs and you can't see any of these black Venezuelan quarries because they're all hiding. So I've thrown a cube of bloodworms in there and hopefully that'll fall right into the middle of the screen and these guys will start to come out. So I've just had to give these guys a bit of a spook to come out, but you can see right there in the middle of the screen is one of the males. Now, these guys, when they're young, they look really fantastic. They have a really brilliant black color on them and they look pretty much like the fish you can see right there in the middle of the screen. So the males stay the same, but because these guys are a hybrid version of the, I think it's the Aeneas quarries, the females get quite a lot larger and you can see one of the females at the back, they lose a lot of that luster. So this female looks quite disgusting in my opinion, but hopefully she's gonna be full of eggs and ready to lay a bunch of eggs in one of our buckets. So 
These two are the ones that are coming out. They're gonna come out and have a little bit of an eat, but you can really see right there just how much that color does fade on these guys. So the basic method with these guys, like I was saying before, is you wanna pull apart your males and females. Now, obviously, because these guys haven't been spawning, there's no point pulling apart the males and the females given how fat those females are. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is in a tank where these guys are spawning and they're like free spawning and you can see there's eggs in the tank all the time and you wanna try and control that spawn. What you wanna do is separate your males and females out into two separate tanks and then let those females fatten up on bloodworms and all that kind of stuff and let the males have a little bit of a break from spawning and then you can reintroduce those guys. So these are my black Venezuelans. And then over in this tank, we have the Trilineatus females. So in here, I think we have maybe four or five females. And these guys, right there in the middle of the screen is a female, and you can see just how plump these guys are. Now, they have been laying eggs around the aquarium, which means that they're just like, the ovaries are just exploding with eggs at this point. So they're really, really ready to go. And um, they've just been eating a ton of these blood worms. Now there's also a few stir buys in here, so not to be mistaken for the Trilineatus, which look kind of similar. We're fattening up some stir buys to hopefully breed in the future. But at the moment in time, we're just focusing on these Trilineatus or these Juliatus. So you can see there is a huge female and she's just ready to go. So, so these guys are definitely ready to go and are gonna be added to their bins today. So these are gonna be the bins that we're gonna be using in today's video. So these guys are just 60 liter bins that you can get from Bunnings or if you're in America or someplace like that, you can probably get these from Home Depot. And these cost about $12 Australian. So I spent, I think $24 then on both of these guys and you don't have to buy them with the lids, which is great. So the idea is we're gonna be adding a sponge filter. So you can see we've got some of our sponge filters here. So these are just like for like a big tank. You can get these on my website as well. To each of these buckets, we're gonna be adding one of these. And also there's gonna be a bunch of different spawning sites for these guys to go on. So there'll be like some PVC. And I'll show you guys how I set that up in here. So I haven't cleaned these guys yet. We're gonna give these guys a wash out to make sure there's none of that like factory sludge and poison in here, if there is gonna be any and then we're gonna fill them up with water. You don't need to have a lid because these guys won't jump. So we'll probably fill them up to like this level and then we'll add some air. So there'll be airflow coming up in the tubs and then we'll add probably like a few spawning sites and things like that. And then we'll introduce the fish and see what happens. Okay, so we'll stop this one and we'll just add the next tub. There we go. Okay, so the tubs are full. They're actually quite big, so they're not gonna be able to tip over or anything like that. We're gonna add some water conditioner because we do not want to kill our colonies that we've been growing up for years. There we go. That's quite of that. And then we can add our sponge filters. Okay, so we've set them up. Now this is gonna be the Trilineatus tub and this is gonna be the Black Venezuelan tub. So we're gonna add some spawning sites now. So the first thing we're gonna to add to both of these is this pipe. Now we're gonna put this pipe like this basically in the aquarium, we're just gonna lean it up against something like that. And what you can see happening is those bubbles are going and running up against that pipe and it's creating flow against that pipe. So hopefully that'll entice them all to spawn along that. So we'll add that to both of our things here. It's not too important where this one goes because I don't think the trail in the artist will spawn on this. And then the other thing we're gonna add to this tub is we're gonna add a spawning mop because the trial in the artists absolutely love to spawn on this in the aquarium that they're normally in. So we'll just add that. It's not too important where this goes, but one thing I wanted to talk about with this setup that's really, really good is first of all, if you've got aquariums like with snails and stuff like that in it, Obviously, there's not going to be any snails in this tub that are going to eat the eggs of the quarries, so that's a bonus. The other thing too is the quarries apparently really like this dark environment. So in the aquariums, like they've got really like high lighting and things like that. So hopefully this dark environment really does help them quite a lot. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take out our fish, have a look at them from the top and see if they're plump and ready to go. And then we'll add them to their tubs. Now, I do not think this will be easy at all. I can see there's already five quarries right here, so two big fat females and then three males, so that's great. Because what we're gonna wanna have is, while I'm catching these out, I'll just talk to you guys. What we're gonna wanna have is a higher ratio of males to females. What's gonna happen is the males are gonna go a little bit crazy. They're gonna start chasing those females around the aquarium 
and the more males we have chasing females, the higher chance that we'll have of breeding. So if there's only like one male and a bunch of females, there'll be too many distractions for him. But if there's two males for every female, say, or just one more extra male in that tank than females, you've got a much higher chance of the male finding a female to spawn with, if that makes sense. So yeah, this is not gonna be easy because there's a ton of mom. Now the reason I wanna breed these black Venezuelans so bad as well, is because these guys are just in such high demand lately. I mean, and understandably, they look so cool. People actually aren't producing enough of these. That's very, very good for me because it means that they're actually worth a little bit more. Got another big female here. So yeah, obviously these are a lot more profitable to breed than say like an albino quarry or something like that, which would only go for like a buck. These might go for a couple of bucks, so. So we've got all of our quarries in this tub and you can see right here the clear males and females. So this is the best way to sex quarries. It's a little bit tricky when they're young because you normally have to go by size, but you can see right here, it's super obvious with this species, which ones are the females. So right there in the middle of the screen where I'm pointing out is a female. That would be a female. That big one there would be a female. And that one there would be a female. So normally the females are quite a lot bigger than the males, as you can see right here. I mean, the females are massive and that's just because they're full of eggs. So they're gonna be bigger and rounder. The males are obviously slimmer, so we'll try and bump them again to get a good look at a male, but that one right there would be a male. There's four females in here and five males, which is great. If we can find another male in that tank, then that'd be perfect, but we'll go and we'll add these guys to their tub. So we'll go add them. So we'll add these guys in and we'll just put them in here and we'll slowly just acclimate them in. But we'll go and we'll start catching out some of these Juliais. So this is gonna be a little bit more of a challenge, but we're gonna start fishing out these Trilineatus males. Okay, so I found five males in there. Now we're gonna try and fish out these females. And then these guys are a little bit prettier and you can see in here, I think we have two obvious females. So right there in the middle of the screen, these two are definitely gonna be females and then there's I think five males or four males and maybe this one right here could be a little sneaker female. So we'll add these guys to their tub as well. You can see how plump these females are. They're very, very big. So I'm guessing these guys will definitely spawn. I'm not too sure about those black Venezuelans because I've never spawned them before, but these guys spawn all the time and are a very, very easy quarry to breed. Let's just put these guys in here. And then what I do is I just slowly acclimate them in like that and just keep adding water and water until they're acclimated. Okay, so now we've set up the tubs. They're all ready to go, the fish are all in here. So what we're gonna do is, it's like 12 o'clock in the afternoon now, so it's lunchtime. I'm gonna head off and just leave these guys in here, basically until they spawn, hopefully. So I'm not too sure whether these guys are gonna be sensitive to the time of day or things like that. If I was gonna take a guess, I'd say they're probably gonna spawn in the morning, but I mean, they could honestly spawn now, they could spawn in a couple of days once they've settled in a little bit better. So we'll just leave them in here. We are still gonna feed them, but we're gonna really try and make sure that, that water stays really, really good quality. So we're not gonna overfeed them. We're just gonna feed them so that they don't go hungry or anything like that. So, I mean, right now they're going a little bit crazy. They're running around and running up and down the walls and things like that. It's very, very hard to see because of how dark these tubs are. So I think what will happen is hopefully they spawn and then we'll take the colonies out and we'll raise the eggs and raise the fry and then hopefully get these guys into a grow out tank and watch them grow up. So I'm gonna go have lunch. I'll catch up with you guys if anything happens and fingers crossed something happens. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so it's been about a week now at this point and uh, I'm just gonna break the news to you guys. Nothing's happened in these tubs. Now, we're gonna do a few things. We're gonna change it up because I'm not gonna make a whole entire long video and not breed any quarries in these tubs. I think this is a good idea. It's been done before and I've been doing a ton of research and I've come up with a few things. So we're gonna talk about a few things really, really quickly in regards to these quarries and how we're gonna breed them and some of the things that I'm gonna try and change. So if you have a look down the bottom of these tubs, you'll notice that the fish aren't looking like they wanna spawn at all. Now, there could be a few things. I mean, first of all, it could be entirely possible that the fish haven't settled into these tubs yet and it has been a week but maybe it's taking a little bit longer for them to settle in. Nonetheless, I haven't noticed anything happening even though I've been doing daily water changes, like huge cold water changes. The fish are super plump and ready to go. They just haven't started to lay their eggs. Now, what I've been thinking about is in regards to quarries, the main thing about quarries is making sure that they're actually ready to breed and I would easily say that we've ticked both the boxes with these species here that they are ready to breed. And the second thing is the trigger and 
finding the right trigger. Now, maybe this method isn't the best for this species and I've made this video and I've kept all these segments in here to show you guys that I'm human too and it's completely normal that you know this is biology you're not always gonna have success when you try and breed stuff and we're gonna have to obviously change something so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be attempting to breed some of the albino quarries in this tank over here in these tubs because I reckon it will work with the albino quarries because they're ready to go and we can do the normal triggers for these guys. Albino quarries are super easy to breed. Same with bronze, they're both the same, they just look different. And they're super easy to breed and I'm pretty sure they're gonna breed in these tubs. So these tubs could be a great method for those albino quarries, but I'm still very persistent on breeding both of these two species, the black Venezuelans and the triliniatus. So I'll quickly show you my plan. So if you come over to this tank, you can see in this tank we have my colony of albino quarries. Now, this isn't the whole colony, this is just the females. And if you look up on the glass here, you can notice that there's a ton of these eggs. Now, all of these eggs were unfertilized because there's only females in here. Because these guys, if you look at just how fat they are, they're bursting with roe. Now, if you don't know what roe is, roe is just fish eggs. You can see their stomachs are absolutely full of eggs. Look at this one in the back. They're just exploding with eggs and they're really ready to go. Like even if you look at this one in the front. So these guys have been breeding in here and there's one female stir by koi which we've also been plumping up. That's up the back here as well, but we're not talking about those this video. So these guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these guys out of this tank. We're gonna put them in this tub and we're gonna take the black Venezuelans out and we're gonna put them in there. But now the focus of the video is gonna be on these black Venezuelans and these albino quarries. Now the triggering of these fish doesn't just end at doing like a cold water change and changing the tank. We're also gonna add one of these, which is a power head. So this power head, what it's gonna do is because both of these quarries are, well, we don't scientifically know whether the black Venezuelans are part of the Aeneas group, but Aeneas quarries absolutely love flow. And what we're gonna do, you can see up the back of this tank is a matten filter. And this matten filter is creating a ton of flow in the aquarium and Anais quarries absolutely love flow. So in an attempt to try and breed these quarries, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a massive water change and then we're gonna add this power head up to the back of the tank and try and get a ton more flow in here. And we're gonna try and get those fish to think there's been a massive rainfall and hopefully that'll induce some spawning. So let's get to moving these fish around. We'll get the albino quarries in here. We'll get the black Venezuelans in here and we'll see how we go. see these guys right next to each other how similar they look so they definitely appear to be part of the same family but I think it's still not confirmed yet so someone in the comments can probably tell us but it's not confirmed yet these are apparently a skull side or whatever but they could be an NAS so I don't know what the deal is but they're very very similar okay so just before I show you guys the black Venezuelans and the albino quarries and their new setups. I've actually surprised myself and I have bred the triliniatus. Let me show you. So if you pull out the spawning mop and you look there right in the middle of the screen we have an egg. So I've looked through this mop and I've spotted quite a few different locations of these strands with eggs on them. So you can see right there in the middle of the screen is another two eggs and uh, I'm sure throughout this mop there might be another 20 or so. There's another egg right there in the middle of the screen. So these guys, they don't seem to get rid of all their eggs in one go and deposit all of their ovaries worth of eggs in one go. They seem to do it over a couple of days. So we're gonna leave these guys in this tub and let them continue to spawn and fill up that spawning mop maybe over the next two days. And then we'll take the colony out and we'll leave the mop in there and we'll try and raise those fry. Another thing we could do is we could just literally take this mop out and uh, hatch this mop in a separate container. But I kind of just want to see what happens if we leave it in here and we try and raise some fry in here. So that's some very, very exciting news. Now, if you come look in this tub, we might be able to see down the bottom here. Oh, we're still not going to be able to see them. Uh, some albino quarries. So the albino quarries are all in this tub now. And hopefully they're going to breed for us probably in the next day. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a pole because they'll definitely spawn on this pole, I'm pretty sure. So we'll set that up. But then if you look at our black Venezuelans, these guys are going nuts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that power head and we're gonna see in the morning whether anything happens. These guys might take a few days to settle in completely, but they're going crazy. We might add just a tiny bit of cover so they feel a little bit safer, but we'll keep chocking them full of blood worms and uh, we'll add some flow in here and see how they go. So 
So the tanks are all set up now and we're gonna see in the morning whether any breeding happens. Now these guys have been quite active and I think it could just either be stress or it could be they think there's been a massive water flow and in the morning they could breed now. You can see just how big some of these females are and they're just gonna be full of rows. So hopefully we have some success. You can see there's some worms floating around. So I did feed some live white worms that I do culture myself and I also fed a cube of blood worms. So these guys are really full and they don't seem to be stressed in my opinion. So you can see we've added this piece of driftwood in case they want to go sit underneath it, but it doesn't seem like they're interested in doing that at all. So they're swimming in that flow created by that power head up the back. Yeah, I'll catch up with you guys in the morning and we'll check whether these albinos have spawned and whether these black Venezuelans have spawned. Fingers crossed they have. All right, so here we're on the iPhone and we can have a little bit of a better look at what's going on. So I'm going to try and get some recording for you guys to understand how these guys really breed. So if you look up the back here, you're going to see this female and this male are kind of flirting. The females are being pursued by the males and what's happening is the males are trying to get in front of those females and do what's called a T-pose. So hopefully someone's going to do it in front of us. But what will happen is, so the male will get in front of them. They'll do a T-pose where the males will inseminate the females and I don't know how the process actually works. like how the females um, inseminate the eggs, but then what will happen is the females will go deposit a bunch of eggs in that basket that I was showing you guys before, so the back of their fins, and they'll go and find a nice place to go and lay those eggs. So you can see there's a female right there being very submissive. All three females seem to be up the back here. So you can also really see here on this high quality camera, um, the details of the females and how ugly they are when they get older. So this is just a, a warning for when these guys do get older, they really do lose a lot of that luster, but as little youngins, they're very, very gorgeous looking fish, but. So what we're gonna do is, you can see right here, they're just, just chewing on these eggs. We're gonna stop that. It's all the males that are, aren't breeding that go around and eat the eggs. So you kind of have to watch these guys, which is kind of annoying, but I mean, I'm sure that if you had more spaces for the eggs to uh, disappear into, you'd have a bit more success. Anyways, so the plan from here is we're just gonna leave these guys. I'm gonna keep collecting the eggs and uh, we'll let them finish their spawning. But I do realize that the point of this video is breeding quarries in tubs. And if we come over here to the albino quarry tub, you'll see that there's, I mean, they're a little bit easier to see on this camera, but they're all down the bottom there. And there's um, a bunch of them running up and down the walls of this tub. So these guys are spawning in here. And if I take the camera underwater, you'll be able to see all the eggs that they're depositing um, up and down the sides of these, these walls here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave these guys in here until this afternoon when I'm gonna come in and then we can separate them all out. So we'll take all of these guys out of this tub and we'll leave the eggs in here and we'll let these guys hatch and then we can rear up the fry in here and then we can condition the breeders again. We'll also do that probably with our trilineatus. You're not gonna be able to see them spawning but there are a bunch more eggs inside of the spawning mop. So that's really, really exciting as well. And this was the main point of the video to show you guys that you can breed these guys in these tubs. It just depends on the species. Now, I'm also pretty sure that you could breed these black Venezuelans in here if you added like a power head and added a bunch of flow, but they do seem to like the shape of the tank. So we'll see, maybe in a future video, we'll try that out. But the black Venezuelans are also very hard to catch out of these tubs because they're black. So we'll leave these guys for now and I'll catch up with you guys when they're done spawning. Alrighty, so it's been about an hour and a half now and the spawning's still kind of going, but it's mostly done and it has slowed down. So we've collected quite a few eggs. Now I really, really hope that these guys are fertilized. I mean, there's just a ton in this cup and we're gonna be adding a bit of methylene blue to this cup so that there's no fungus growing on the eggs or any eggs that aren't fertilized don't spread fungus to the eggs around them. So you can see them all here. They lay them in clusters of about 10 to 20. Spawn robbing is a problem with quarries and if you don't know what spawn robbing is, it's a term used for like a fish that basically just steals the eggs of other fish and these guys steal their own eggs. So they'll lay the eggs and then they'll turn around straight away and go ahead and eat those eggs. So that's actually been a problem with these guys. So these albino quarries have been laying a ton of eggs and I look on the walls and there's constantly eggs on the walls, but then they just disappear within a couple of minutes. So that's a really big problem with these tubs. I mean. There's probably spawn robbing going on in here with the trilineatus, like they're probably like laying them and eating them, but they're not eating as many because quarries are quite blind fish and they can't see very, very well. If the quarries can't see their white eggs against a white pole, like you can see right here, and they're just white along the black of the walls, then they're just gonna turn around and eat those eggs because they just see them straight away. It's the same in this tank. They just see the eggs very, very vividly. And you can see right there, 
they go ahead and they just turn around and eat them. So it's very, very annoying. And it's gonna to lead towards this being a little bit of a fail. So, I mean, it's a good method, but it didn't work the best just because of that spawn robbing. So in the future, we'll try this again. I'm probably not gonna bother trying to hatch the eggs in these tubs at the moment. I'm gonna take this mop out and try and hatch these eggs artificially. And I guess this is kind of, I don't know, Sorry if you think this was a waste of time, but I hope you learned something. But we're gonna hatch those eggs separately. In the future, we're gonna make another video, and I reckon what we're gonna do is we're gonna like try and grow some algae or something along these walls, so that the walls are like dirty, and they wanna lay their eggs along the white poles. So hopefully that'll mean that there's more eggs um, and they don't eat as many because they can't see them as well. So yeah, I mean like we were successful and they were spawning and all that kind of stuff, but like I was saying before, what would happen is they'd just lay the eggs on the side and because the side's black, what would happen is the fish would go up to the egg and just eat it straight away because it was so obvious that the egg was there. So they'd basically just literally turn around and eat their eggs. And it's kind of the same thing with the Venezuelans. And it's always a problem when you have quarries, they do rob their spawns. And I mean, it's been happening, I guess, with these Chalaniatis. I saw those eggs on the, on the walls, but they are, have been eating those straight away. And I mean, there's a few in this net, but not as many as I was getting in the tanks. So I think that could just be related to it being a little bit stressful being in this new tub and they're not producing as many eggs and things like that. So that's fine. This isn't the kind of species that I think would work in this kind of setup. I think the Aeneas and like the ones that deposit all of their ovaries worth of eggs in one go are the ones that you want to do. So not like something that's going to deposit 30 eggs today and then another 30 tomorrow. They, you want all the eggs in one go. So I think this will work and we're going to be playing around with this in the future. What we might do is in the future, we're going to paint like the sides, I think, green and make it look like the sides are really, really dirty because I went back through the book and I read it and normally what they like to do is actually grow algae on the sides of this bucket because it stops the quarries from wanting to breed on it because it's dirty. And what they do is instead of breeding on the inside, on the walls, they actually breed on these pipes, which are white and they can't see the eggs as well. So look, I mean, it's definitely a method that could work. And if you're in a limited space, it might work pretty well. I mean, you could even use these tubs just to grow out little baby quarries or hatch quarry eggs in. So that could be a, a future video as well. But obviously not everything went to plan and that's completely normal with all these things. So anyways, that's gonna wrap the video up guys. Thanks so much for watching it. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you guys learned something from this video. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed by it, but I mean, this is what it's all about. So thanks so much for watching it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.